Hey, um, this is Guillaume doing a talk show, guillotine talk. I got a really good friend of mine, Lucie Voix, known for a couple of years. We philosophize here and there, and this is the first time we're doing a show together. So this is uh, Lucie Voix. Hi, Guillaume. Hi. And, uh, Hi, everybody out there. Yeah, every we we we've been uh, encountering each other for a couple of years here and there, different events and stuff. And uh, uh, the last thing was at Wellpergus, where uh, Lucy Bois won the Beauty Queen contest. Of uh, what, what was the actual what was the actual like uh, title? You know, it was just a beauty. It was a it was a witch pageant. Yeah, like a witch pad. Yeah, like a witch beauty contest. Yeah, yeah. which is like really awesome. You know, they, they had some things uh I, I had to go kind of late because i had something else there but it was great we have you know it was like a, a rave you know the, the dancing and stuff because you know i go out dancing and stuff like that so it was really it was, it was very a fun cool setup yeah it was very I got cool. to see a lot of people that i hadn't seen in a while and uh one yeah. of my directors was there and and uh, a lot of different people were there it was really fun so was, i felt like it was really good you know we really got to embrace uh stan spirit you know? Yeah, and that, that was actually a, a, a celebration for Stanton LeVay yeah, and, and a mutual yeah. friend of me and, and Lucy Bois here, Lucy Bois. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. that was a mutual friend of ours. And we're sad because, you know, he passed away. It was almost been a year and a half or two years now, I think. Has it been? It's been at least a year, I think. It hasn't yeah. seemed that long, though, but yeah. It hasn't seemed that long. It's really, yeah, I'm really sad about it. It's, it's it's hard for me because I've had, you know, and plus I'm a little bit older. I'm 54 now. A lot of my friends have passed away, you know, uh, a lot of them uh, uh, just through the years and different things, you know. So because uh, I was in the punk scene here in L.A. and all that. So, you know, loss is really hard. Uh, and I, yeah. even, you know, everybody, even if not the punk scene, you know, I mean, even my parents are getting up there and everything. So we got to, like, face that, if, if, you know, we're well, going to be classic. I I felt, definitely felt his spirit there, and I felt like he would have been very happy about how it turned out, you know? I felt oh, yeah. like Sharon did a great job with everything, and everybody was so supportive of it. Yeah, it yeah, no, I, was, I thought it was great, and, uh, you know, and I go out in L.A. a lot, and I, that place is a, a good place and everything, and hopefully, you know, they'll do something for, like, Samhain or something, you know? And, uh, mm -hmm. There'll be another event for Samhain uh, or, or another Wellpergus. This is, like, an, a Wellpergus event, and had some other different things. I got to meet some other people that I hadn't seen for a long time. It was a really fun event. Yeah, but there was definitely some great performers there. Very like awesome performers there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a, it was, a, it was really fun. So, so it, and part of that, you know, was the networking part because uh, we've been talking about and you've been t saying about, you know, that you want to form uh, more of a, a group, you know. And I've been watching other videos, like a magical group. I don't know if you want to call it a coven or or a left-hand path magical group or whatever title or term, I guess it doesn't matter. It's just the ideas behind it, you know? It's a magical satanic order. Um, we have members worldwide right now, but it's just not, hasn't been open to the public as of yet. Something in the working, something in the making right now. Kind of just creating content and having fun entertaining the world right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think, yeah, be you know, besides getting into philosophy and, and the different ideas behind things, I think it's good to just, you know, kind of have a thing where, where people can just uh, network and you just meet each other and, 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 you know, be comfortable around uh, our own kind of people, you know, because sometimes, yeah. especially in the past, when I was raised in the 80s, you, you had to really have that underground. I mean, we couldn't even have this probably on here, you know, uh, with satanic panic and all that. And there was like a lot of, uh, you know, people don't know how hard it was for uh, mm -hmm. people growing up and then not just if they were into Satanism or uh or, or a cult, but if they were just, you know, if they were like homosexual or anything, they would just mm -hmm. be attacked. Uh, it was really sad, so. Yeah, and it's something that still goes on in this day and age. I, throughout my life, I've, I've dealt and dealt with like great adversaries, you know, just because of the fact that I practiced a magical left-hand path and I'm a Satanist. Yeah, you know? yeah. And in the court the, the, system, in a lot of the systems with my family, like I, like it's caused a lot of division, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the the thing is, is is it's like a, a people assume that you know because of that that you're not the people are naturally like bad or would do mm -hmm. evil things or do something like to hurt kids or something. I get that all the time on the internet, you know. And I'm like, that's not what it's about at all. I mean, if anything, I feel more comfortable around that than like say like the Catholic priests and stuff, which are like sneaky and they do this stuff, but it's like they're supposedly above that. But I mean, I think people in in, in our scenes are more. You know, I, I, I've never seen, you know, I've seen people, you know, they're, they're, they're moral, they're ethical, uh, 
more even than than people that you know claim to be like on the right hand with, with Christians. Yeah. They usually say that they're all all this, and then it builds up, and they do something horrible, like the you know all the priests and all that stuff. And I mean, yeah. you know, it's I guess it's human nature that there's always like some something could always come up, no matter what your beliefs are or whatever, because you know you see all these things. But it's it's good to have. I feel more comfortable around people that are just like you know not trying to just not trying to like put up a facade or having to hide mm -hmm. anymore. It's, I mean, I, I was into you know I got into this uh, more of the left hand path. Uh, as a teenager, because, you know, I was raised in LA and there was a lot of like heavy metal people around. And that was like, you know, with Black Sabbath and, and uh, Motley Crue was just hitting there. So there was like a lot of like, of that, of that kind of like imagery. And then I started learning more about it uh, because, you know, I also had some people die when I was a kid and got me into the spirits a little bit. So, so there's, there's a, it, it, it happens naturally to people and it's not something that people just decide, oh yeah, I want to be a really bad person. And so I want to get into like Satanism. That's just like, that's just a stereotype, you know? And For and it's me, good to, for me yeah. Satanism was something like that I was going through some crazy times in life and um, Satanism opened the door to just really um, getting in touch with that inner, that inner God within us all, you know? Self-empowerment to overcome great adversaries no matter what, not having to have those things defined by a uh, by religion or something like that, but actually yeah. going into yourself and finding that power within yourself. You know, I think um, some people in the left hand path are some of the strongest people you can know. Um, they tap into a deeper, a deeper light source, if you want to call it. You know, uh -huh. and I think that's what really magic empowers people to do. Is like when everything else in your life seems out of your hands, there is that force you can go in and learn to play with. You know, learn to play with and be able to manipulate your reality to achieve what you want to achieve. And this, there's no limit to what the human potential is capable of. And I think yeah. that's one thing that magic magic really opens up into play you know and i feel like religion had to, has done a lot to suppress that and to, to suppress like the voice of people you know mm -hmm. keep them for in sure. a mind controlled kind of unthinking for themselves kind of feeling like they're out there in a victim stance when really people are much more powerful than they could ever imagine yeah i mean i i mean the, the way that and this is something that I just kind of came up with as a kid because you know i was i was, and i know that you had a christian background you were kind of forced mm -hmm. like i was uh, as a child and stuff into that. And we saw the yeah. hypocrisy. That was a big part of us, I'm, I'm sure, reaching out to these kind of things was seeing the hypocrisy and how people really don't change, you know? I mean, they just, they put up a, this facade and it's really, if anything, it's it's more like, you know, like a, a camouflage, you know? Because people trust these pastors and stuff and they turn around and do bad things to, to people usually. It's really sad. Uh, I, I encountered that a lot uh, in LA and things like that. So, I mean, the, the main thing I, I got is, is you know, uh, I, I believe that, you know, when we were given the gift of of the, the forbidden fruit, even in the. And so when we were given the gift of that, it's like, you know, it, uh, it was like that was making us more towards being gods. You know, that's why the, the, the demiurge, but the one God was saying, don't eat that fruit. And the serpent, who I would see as another God, a helper God to us, was like telling us, you know, no, go ahead and become you know live to your full potential become your own god or or, or whatever you want to do you know if you want to adapt to whatever you want to do so that that's that's, that's what pretty interesting because even in the story of prometheus you know prometheus goes and steals the light of the gods and gives it to humans so that way humans can have power of choice for themselves because the gods are going to destroy the human from destroy mankind you know so i think it's interesting you know how that dialogue goes throughout a lot of religions but what is that light within? You know, that light is within all of us. And that's a power, it's the power of free will and choice, which I think religion tries to suppress and tries to make people believe that they don't have one. Right? Actually, that's the thing that empowers everybody. Everybody's capable of great goods and great bad. Everybody's capable of being a god in their own life or being a devil in their own life, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, that's 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 the way that that's the way that I look at things, too. I, I think it's just more of an honest way of looking at things, more of a, you know, the that we know that we exist and that's all we can really go for. But it's a lot of people that, 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 that are putting all their faith on something that they don't even know exists or not. We know we have some kind of soul, some kind of mind, some kind of body. We have faith in that. People could say that's atheistic but or, or agnostic or whatever it is. But there's a lot of things, even in Christianity, that, that really got changed into Puritanism, which is like really not even like the original, you know, Gnostic, more like Gnostic Christian, you know. I mean, because a, a lot of people in Christianity, they don't see, you know, that the whole point and it's been totally just kind of put away 
is that you know the idea that of the their god becoming a man you know like the, they say the, you know like the god became the man of jesus i mean a lot of the people philosophize you know the saying well if that if, if god could become a man then man could, could become a god and it was more like that but that stuff was all killed by you know by the catholic church and by the you know people that wanted to get rid of gnostic christianity so i mean there was a lot of ideas that, that, that went into this stuff that just got suppressed and because people were just really just mean you know i mean the witch yeah. trials and all that stuff just trying to just and a lot know, of really that had to do with like keep women down a lot keep anybody a who's lot not, of it, like, you know. i saw a lot mm -hmm. of it had to do with breaking the front part the family unit and really uh going against women you know women in nature to accomplish uh control over family over war to create their own war people that, for their own greedy values decided to go in and abolish you know the whole family system and they did use women for that as well you know and if you attack women within the family then you're attacking a pivotal point part of the family that helps keep the family together and that brings life with the givers of life you know and yeah I, and i think that's in this day and age you see women coming back into power you see great women still rising up nowadays because like we're tired of it yeah you know? for sure for sure yeah. i mean I, they, there's 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 a I mean, even and the witch trials, you know, I think it was continued with the, the asylum systems in the 20th century, you know, because I mean, there was like, you know, when I was like, because, you know, I, I went to school to be a counselor and stuff like that. So I studied psychology and there's like cases, you know, that women that just, you know, like, for example, that like got pregnant without being married and they didn't have a rich family to hide them or something like that. They get put in an asylum is like they call them like a moral degenerate or, you know, mm -hmm. like they'd say that that's like a mental problem that you. That, that, that a woman got pregnant somehow. I mean, who knows? She could have been assaulted. She could have been sexually, you know, raped or whatever. It didn't matter to them. You know, they were just like, oh, you're an unwed mother. We're going to put you in an asylum. And like, mm -hmm. you know, and of course, when somebody's put in those situations, then they, they actually start, you know, getting like uh, nervous or showing signs and people are like, oh yeah, you're crazy, you know? So mm -hmm. it's just all this, all this stuff, you know, it, it was continued on. I see even modern psychology, a lot of times everything's a disorder. And a lot of these things, you know, like ADHD is what they diagnose me with and dyslexia. And a lot of these things, you know, can be enhancements, but they don't really look at it that way. It's all disorders, you know, it's all, you know, attention and deficit, so much, hyperactivity disorder or, you know, this now, disorder, you know. Yeah, now they're starting to realize, like, you know, that a lot of the philosophy, that all these ancient wisdoms from a lot of ancient cultures had a lot of, had a lot of, like are based on true to things dealing with energy, you know, energy to deal with traumas in a childhood and a child that way they don't, that way the, the trauma doesn't turn into like a curse on that child's life and then a curse on that family and that bloodline. And those traumas go untreated, like that's what we have, you know, we have these mental disorders, we have all these things, especially with sexual abuse and all these things that, and religion does so well to keep these things suppressed, you know, to suppress the voice of children. And I think that's a big thing too, is empowering our children to have more of a voice, to have control of their body. And, a lot of these things happen within the family unit, you know, within the family unit. And the sick thing is that it's just been going on for so long that that it's just normal hush hush stuff. And the sad yeah. thing is that our future generations pay for this. You yeah. know, we look at our generations now, like suicide is on the rise, self infliction harm is on the rise, and why? Because there's a lot more to this, you know. This isn't something that's just come out of the blue, and it's not. It's something that we've all created, you know? It's it's blood on all of our hands that we've all created until we start to talk about these things and make it more normal to talk about these things and just have acceptance, sit with the fact that these things do happen, then we can actually begin to like create solutions for them. And begin to yeah, happen. yeah. I mean, that, that that's because, you know, uh, as part of when I was a, uh, working as a chemi chemical dependency counselor, I worked with uh, in parole and I would see, you know, almost everybody you know everybody coming out of there was, had some kind of abuse you know, whether it's physical or sexual or whatever you know and neglect uh being in the foster care system a lot of times you know and this could this kind of goes to my chaos theory you know like chaotic things happen and you know they just happen naturally or whatever mm -hmm. uh, and and the way the process is is people want to like create these bureaucracies or these programs or these things to like make them better but a lot of times it makes it worse you know it makes mm -hmm. it, it most of the time it makes it worse you know it it because it you know because then, then all of a sudden, be, be beyond somebody having uh, an addiction problem because they, they've lost space with human beings, so they're better off just doing whatever drug they want to do. Then they have like the the the, the, the you know the freedom taken away, like the the negative consequences. The government gives the neg negative consequences. So if drugs were just bad alone on their own, why do they have to put you know like if you just have a little piece of it, 
they're going to put you in jail for like all these years. It's almost like witchcraft, you know, like, like, you know, like it's, it reminds me of like, you know, I, I could imagine in the old days in the witch trials here in the Puritan times, like if they had a little powder, you know, almost, like, you know, they would put, they would kill somebody, you know, they torture the woman or burn them alive or whatever, yeah. burn them, whatever they did, you know, and that, that's, we don't look at it that way, but we're like, yeah, this is a little powder. And they're like putting people away for 10 years for that. And I mean, you know, there has to be just a big reform, you know, I mean, I, I'm not for people using this, you know, because I was a, a, you know, chemical dependency uh, counselor, but, you know, harm reduction is more is more of the way, you know, and instead of the way that it's set up now, it's kind of set up for failing, you know? Yeah. And I think one thing that I've come to, I've, I've uh, seen a lot in life is that a lot of these have to do with, with covering up secrets, you know, and covering up a lot of these deeper scandals within the church, within the family unit. A lot, a lot of it has to do with keeping keeping people quiet about the stuff that's going on. You know the drugs, all that stuff. You know, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's easier to drug someone and to keep them quiet than it is to do with them. And, and the fact is that the fact is that nobody wants to accept that human beings are capable of such uh, disgusting things. You know, but at the end of the day, it's facts. It's there. It's black and white. Now, what do we do about it? You know. Yeah, I mean, it, that's, it, that's it, where magic it. comes into play. Is in how is it and in self empowerment. And that's why I'm a big advocate for empowering ourselves to educate ourselves to understand what we're dealing with. Yeah. And I mean, and that's, you know, and I know people get it twisted or whatever, but that's kind of really what Satanism and the left-hand path is about is self-empowerment. Mm -hmm. And that's really why it's, 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 you know, put down on and all that. And people are saying, you know, you're, everybody has to be a cult member or has to do some horrible things to people if they want to be in a cult or something. And it's not even about that. It's just self-empowerment. We understand the power of the mind, like how strong our energy and the power of the mind is a well-educated mind, a well-exercised mind is a is a capable of great things, you know? And it's, it's a war, what they say, it's a war on the mind, you know? It's, it's easier to control people that are kept stupid and control, like, to believe that they have no choice. It's easier to got to herd the sheep like that, correct? Well, yeah. people start thinking and they start thinking on themselves and they start being able to create their own systems and have a voice and opinion, then that's a lot. That's a that's a harder that's a harder beast to tame. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, see. and, and a, a lot, you know, because I I had some um, a friend I grew up with, uh, you know, and and he was Mexican, and his his uh his uh cousin was like a priest, and uh, mm -hmm. he he didn't you know get wrapped up in the sexual thing, but he knew about it a lot, and it, he said like the patterns that they would do is is like you know a lot of a lot of uh men uh or even women or whatever, but you know they become priests and nuns because they. They, they maybe felt in themselves, you know, like some kind of homosexual tendencies or some kind of sexuality that they were um, weren't comfortable with or they were like programmed to not be comfortable with. So they would and be like, I'll just become a priest if I'm going to be gay. And then they thought that the, the priesthood and, and the Catholic Church would cure them of their, 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 their homosexuality. But it really just pushed it down and then it came up at like these bad times where they're trying to teach kids and things like that. It's like it didn't, you know, it, it's just a bad cycle. And then once they got caught doing something horrible, they just... It's better for them to just act like it never happened. And then they were just like, the, like El Salvador or something where, where it's like, it's not, you know, like in the U.S., they're, they're like really on top of that. But if they send them to like Central America or Poland or some, some, some place that's like not, not, not so, uh, uh, you know, because the Catholic Church is all yeah. over. So they send them to these places and where the, the U.S. couldn't touch them and they would like pr basically protect them. And they would still do that stuff there, I'm sure. But they just were like, oh, you, yeah. know, it, you know, it, it's not. Like in Colombia, it's not, they probably well, you have the countries that, or something, that, you know. You have countries that have great poverty, you know, and I feel like they're kept in a great poverty for a reason, you know, because then people with power and that can go to the country then have this power to abuse these people, these children and these broken family units, and they don't know perfectly well that what they're doing. You know, if every country has achieved such greatness and then they go try to take advantage of the vulnerabilities of another country, that's disgusting, you know? Yeah. And the fact these people have no money that they go ahead and go over there and, and buy the women, buy the children, and they come back to the United States like nothing's happened. But you know what happens in the United States as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, just, it's, it's human nature. It's really sad. I mean, and that's, that's, that's a lot of things I was talking about the other day with, you know, in the USA, we tend to think that racism, and it is a horrible thing. Racism and the is funny horrible, thing is people but, you know, they, 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 there's tribalism person. and there's, there's all these gangs that are formed. So people find differences in themselves and they, it's their choice to either find that difference and like attack that or find that difference and see how that enhances your life and say, you know, maybe I could be like that or it's not so bad or, you know, or, or, or this is what, how yeah. I see it. Acceptance or like... 
the body's a very fascinating mechanism, you know, that it can suppress these memories and hide them, but yet they come out other ways, you know, some people that self inflict harm, people go through eating disorders, and they go through mental disorders, and, and it's the body's way of blocking out the trauma, you know, and then, like, in the old days, they were saying people were possessed. People weren't possessed. They had trauma that it was deeply ingrained in their system that their body's trying to guard them and protect them from, you know, and now today in the day, this day and age, we're finding these things out, you know, we're learning... We have therapies that can go in there and, and heal these, heal, go ahead and address the traumas at an older age. And it's one of the things that even the Native Americans would do when these kind of traumas happen to a young child that they would go in, into a into a teepee with this with the with the steam room and uh, treat the children with peyote and have the children completely shift the perception on these type of things. And once you shift perception on something like that, and the, the, that young mind's able to shift it out of a negative thing to something where they can make peace with it and move on, then it, it, it changes their life, you know, versus somebody mm -hmm. that's stuck in that in that body's protective layer, the soul stuck in that protective layer yeah. of the outside yeah. world. I mean, and that, I think that's, and that's, and I'm sure, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go on and on and see how we could do this uh, as, as, you know, just not just me and you, but the whole community, you know, is, mm -hmm. is to, to meet people and not just judge them or do anything negative, you know, just, just to accept them and see where they are and just go with that. Like, I, that's mm -hmm. why I like the idea of like neurodivergence, you know, it, it's like that people just think differently. It's not that they have a disorder or a disease or, you know, they're, they're mentally ill, uh, you know, the illness. It's, it's just that they think differently a lot. And that, you know, like a lot of these people, you know, like Einstein or, or, or Tesla or even uh, Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, they thought differently that there's, it's like, it's a, a part of it is an enhancement. It can be genius also, but people, because of the last century, you know, anybody who is different and that goes ties into the, to the old witch trials too. Anything different, and a lot of these they guys, say it's a disorder a and it's of, not good. A lot of these guys that made, that came up, that created society's biggest changes, they were all involved in the cult, you know, they were involved. Mm -hmm. And when I say cult, I mean like the hidden sciences of the mind and the body. Yeah, the esoteric and, and yeah. You know? So you know, we understand, we understand that yeah. there's certain God, there's certain God vibrations and words, there's certain, certain energy workings, and it even goes in the golden dawn, all these sort of things where, you know, you can learn to manipulate and cleanse your aura field, and um, it helps you tap into higher faculties and to have a clean, fluid energy to be able to manipulate reality and create what you want, desire to, desire to create as long as, even as well as your body, you know, stay in mind and all that things, all those things that can't be able to have a healthy body, and all these things are, you know, Big companies don't want people to know these type of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So, all right, yeah. well, we're, 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 we agreed to, you know, uh, we're get, getting at the 22 minutes. Uh, I wanted to give you a chance. I don't know. I, I mean, if you uh, if you want to uh, do any kind of like a uh, plugging for any websites or anything that you have like that, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get the links and put in my YouTube down below uh, if you can't think of it right off hand right now. But I, I want to give you a chance to like say what you're doing and Anything, any websites you want people to go to or any kind of uh, any business or anything you want to plug here? Okay, yeah, right now we have links on Order of the Black Pink Sun on YouTube. On TikTok, it's on Order of the Black Pink Sun, um, as well as on Facebook and Instagram. So come and like and follow us. Uh, right now, we're not going to the public just yet. We're working on things. we got things on the wrap. But as soon as that stuff's open to the public, we'll let it, we'll go ahead and divulge that information. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'll get, I'll put all the links down below in the in the in the uh, YouTube uh, comments and all that stuff, so people could just click right on it. So, all right, well, this was great. We'll have to do more of these. Uh, I'm really glad that we got got the time. We've been planning this for like a year, but we just didn't get around to it. And I haven't been doing content as much uh, either. I've been you know wrapped up in yeah. uh, like jobby job stuff. So, yeah. so great. Thanks for thanks thanks so much for being on. And hopefully we'll do more of these. And uh, as always, wish you the best. You know, much you know much uh uh you know i just have i just always have a, a, a I, I always think you know it's in good energy and I mean, i'm just so happy when people that i know or you know are, are, are moving in the right direction and i always think that about you <laughs> so yes well, yeah nice. so all right well thanks a lot and uh Thank you, we'll wrap it up. Are you, are all right last words? yeah <laughs> 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 all right any last words bye bye